I, I talk about this a bit, but I saw it again on the weekend. A coach's ability to get their team to play with maximum effort and competitiveness mm. week in, week out. Now, to, to expect it to happen every single week is folly because it's not going to happen because we're humans and for all sorts of reasons, different things. But if you can get it more often than not... So Collingwood weren't there on the weekend. Uh, I watched Melbourne play North Melbourne for an opening quarter and were nowhere, mm. ab- like competitively nowhere. I watched Carlton, the transformation that's taken over this mm. football club. And, you know, with the Gold Coast didn't turn up in the first quarter. Gold Coast, all sudden, X's and O's that. for yeah. Carlton, ins and outs and forwards. And the, uh, hey, competitive. You give me competitive, I'll let the other coaches work out competitive. If you're the head coach and the senior coach, Bucks, and you can, you can look at your group and get competitive effort. Mm. I'm looking at Carlton now, I'm going, every week. I'm seeing it. You know, I'm seeing Charlie doesn't need to kick 10 every week. Charlie needs to get into situations where he's too on one. You know, the, the coning in this How game. How good was Late. So don't, you don't have to go and sit on people's head. Look at this two on one. Just bring it to ground, Charlie. And then let these little fellas go and compete. So the simplification, it's, it, it is a very simple statement that I'm saying. But gee, I tell you what, these boys right now are all on the same page. If you don't compete, you don't play for a start. So don't think you're getting in this Carlton side if you don't compete. And then you don't have to be best on ground. Every time it's in your area, you fight like you've never fought before. And this is why everyone's loving Charlie Kerno even more than he perhaps was last week when he kicked the big bag. It's because he knew he was two on one and he accepted it and he just fought his way through it. And then the little fellas went to work. And the competitiveness has come out in this Carlton side. And I reckon if you're a Carlton fan right now, you're loving it as much as you have for 10 yeah. years. It, once, once your leaders buy into it, then everyone jumps on. And then it, be, it gathers a momentum of its own. But I reckon it, it needs to start somewhere. And I think Michael Voss deserves some credit. Because three months ago, when he was fronting up to the press conferences, we did, and they were losing and couldn't score, couldn't move the ball, looked static. We were wondering where mm. it was going to go. He said after, and that's what they were. So after after nine rounds, they were six from points against, so they were okay. But they were leaking a little. They were letting uh, the the opposition move move the ball yeah. pretty well, and they were leaking a little bit inside fifty. They lost to Collingwood in round ten, and he walked into the press conference, and pretty much s- declared that their focus is around defence. I would only be walking out of here and um, being lost on the message that um, you know defensively we're not good enough right now. No, I'm not going to get lost in offence. Yeah. You can ask me about it, but I'm pretty clear on what we need to get better at. So I don't want to be confused walking out of here, guys. Get after that. So there was a, there was a moment where he was getting questions fired at him from left, right and centre. They lost the next three games, but they've won the next seven since. And in that time, since that, since that press conference, they have been first with a bullet. They're nine goals better than the next best defensive side in that time. And they've improved and tightened up in their back 50 and their defending ball movement better than anything. So that pressure and effort and intensity that you're seeing to get after the ball helps them going forward, but it also has assisted their capacity to defend. And it's largely been off the back of the senior coach saying, this is my philosophy, this is what we're going to build our game plan off. Whether we're going well or not, this is where we start and this is where we finish. And they play... Look, it'd be a suffocating feeling playing for Carlton, especially when they're going through that run, no doubt about it. So I really feel as if they've just been able to back off that pressure. They were playing so tight early in the year. You know, with their ball movement, they just couldn't see the targets around them. They mm. couldn't handball out of a contest. They couldn't handball chain. They were just boot banging, weren't they, guys? Balls mm. were landing shallow. Mm. Teams were just sending it straight back down the other end. So I think one of his great challenges as a coach uh, has been able to just just unload that pressure slightly and just get them to play a bit more freer. Yep. Now they're playing with confidence. Now they trust each other. They've got great flow. They've got great energy on defence. And now it's all just coming together. So, absolutely, he's been a, he's done a magnificent job coaching yep. to hold, hold his nerve. No, that's a good point. He's got three big weeks still yep. to come. Mm. And it can still go one way or the other, which is the beauty of where we're at. Yep. Carlton. So this is now seven in a row. They've passed all sorts of tests along the way. And the test of Ross Lyon was there yesterday. It was nearly the perfect set up, I thought, at halftime, is would they have the maturity, would they have the the tactical now, some, would they have the nerve to meet it and meet it and excel, they did. It's certainly one of the, well, if not the best wins since I've been here. The Blues take a huge step closer to their first final series in a decade. Carlton wins seven straight for the first time since 2000. 
that second half was compelling. I think there's something in when the team can absorb pressure and it wasn't all going for us. I think that's a special trait to be able to have. It shows a real resilience in the group. Why not the Blues? They're showing everything you want to see from a team that are ready to play finals now. The character, the belief. I think they're built for finals. It takes clubs to turn it around like what we have. It takes a team of people. And they've got a great support around them. They've got a great club that's supporting us. It's a great club win. And they got out there and they did us proud. We're just really, really enjoying where we're at at the moment and we just feel like we've got so much to gain and still so much left to give. What a climb this that. has been from 15th. Let me show you snakes and ladders. So we'd had stability oh. in the top four. It got shook around. There's Can't volatility eat. through the middle. So this week's Tats Lotto numbers and position changes were 2, 4, 5, <laughs> 6, 7, 8, 11, 12 and 13. And the supplementary? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nearly 17 and 18, it was, wasn't it? Mate, but that's it another story. That's funny. So Carlton's rise, it's, there's a couple of things that yep. you, you look for your confirmation bias. The two things about them that had lingered for a long time, they were hostage to who was there. They're not anymore. Mm. Their system now absorbs absentee. Mm. And they were, they were a bit fluky in defence. They, you could but we knew the reason for that. And now they have reinvented that. They have become sustainable and dependable. That's the bedrock of their game. And they've returned their ball movement. I love what they're doing in season. When Jacob Wedring played his second best game when he, after, he's, after he found his form and played a consecutive game of, of, of greatness, we spoke about it. When you have got a centre-half back who plays with a, a Goliath kind of attitude and feel and marks the ball... What that does for everyone is enormous. So he's been a massive tick. What, let's come on, let's be honest. I know current people who, who cut up their membership cards and sent me photos halfway through the year. They, they were done. Good time of self-reflection. A very, them. very good time. Now you'd look at Carlton and say, right, what are, what, what are they doing well? They're doing fundamentals well. They are a hard, tough team. Now, I don't know if that's sustainable. I do. It's a hard, it's a hard way to play footy. Week in, week out to bring that brand of football. But to me, what's happened, they're role players. Like, I, we just saw the highlights there. I don't know what Carlton people think at home. Young Motlock, for example. Mm -hmm. So Motlock runs the ball in the middle of the ground. He was such a timid player because he was so young and he weighed about 62 kilograms. He was little dinky right kicks and just getting it and moving on. The, the, the maturity he's gathered in, like, a year, he stormed through St. Alford, took a couple of bounces and kicked the goal. I said, wow, have a look at that. Blake Akers, I, I used to think, well, he still does sometimes, but he's wasteful with his kicks. Grabs the ball in the wing, he makes three, four efforts, keeps running, kicks a goal. You know, Owies, Fogarty, all these players who have been here for a while, Cotterill, been here for a while, are now understanding what their role is. Yep. Now, that comes with maturity. That comes with get, playing games and getting knocked down and getting back up, going back to the VFL, keep working, keep working, keep working, and it's come together. And they're playing... They're playing a really strong brand of football. Now, can it take them all the way? Are they good enough to go all the way? They're probably the best performed with Melbourne, the best performed team in the comp right now. But they don't have to do it from outside the... Yeah. But you can. You're allowed to do it from yeah. outside the top four. Yep. It can be done. Well, everyone else is sort of trying to figure out who they are and where they are. Carlton's got that in check mm. now. And when and you... The yeah. course of this season, whatever it amounts to, is to get through that patch, that mm. self-destructive patch, hold their nerve and actually make the in-season adjustments rather than have to wait for the next off-season. So that, I think that's superb coaching. We've known that for more than a month now and the leadership buy-in around it. And this is why this will be the rise of Carlton, which we've mm. been waiting an eternity for. I, I, I've got the imagination to see them in a preliminary final with the footy that they're playing. I think that will stack up yeah. in September now. Mm -hmm. And we're about to get a look at it because if the two form teams of the comp are Melbourne and Carlton, playing they're going to play. Night. They're going to play Saturday, Saturday night. night. 